Hello and welcome to Kirby SQL Talk. In this video, we're going to go over how to build a SQL Server solution that's highly available and has disaster recovery. In this second part uh, of the video series, we're going to create the virtual machines. First step of that is to create a virtual network, which is a really quick thing to do. Then we'll create a virtual machine that's going to act as our domain controller. Then we're going to set up the domain controller. And then last, we're going to build three virtual machines to install SQL on. And then in subsequent videos, we're going to go through some of these remaining steps. So let's get into Azure and see what this looks like. So here we are in the Azure uh, portal. If you want to change a color scheme, just a quick tip here, you can double click on the uh, portal background and that'll change. Um, first thing we're going to do is click the plus menu item over here and then down in networking we're going to select a virtual network and there's two different deployment models the older what they call classic model and then the resource manager uh, that's referred to as arm azure resource manager i would pick that one for new deployments and then it's going to prompt us in these azure calls these uh, uh, windows uh, Pay, uh, uh, blades and so we're going to pick a name for our uh, virtual net so let's call it kirby vnet and then we can leave the address space and the sub net name uh, as a default and the resource group we're going to pick one that I already have out there and we're going to select this to pin it to the dashboard so that we uh, don't lose track of it and then click the create button so as it deploys you'll see this box here indicating that it's being created. I like to go ahead and edit the dashboard when that's happening because it just kind of puts it in a default position. And we can't change this. We don't have as many options to change this uh, tile size until it's finished. Then, then we do, we have more options. But for right now, we'll put it right there and um, let that run for a while. And then when that's done, uh, which it looks like it's done right now, we're gonna create a VM as our domain controller. So this looks like it's all set up now. If we click the home button here, we can see how we have our, our virtual network set up. And we're gonna edit the dashboard. And like I promised, we can change this to a two by one. And I do this just cause we can, this is just a logical representation of what we're building, but it helps us to kind of visualize what we're doing. So the next step is to create a VM virtual machine that's gonna act as our domain controller. So click this to get us into our marketplace again. Pick a virtual machine, and we're just gonna pick a Windows Server 2012 a virtual machine. Now this time it's gonna prompt us for a few more options. And as we click the next uh, button, uh, there's four different things, basically three things that we're gonna set up, and then it's gonna give us a summary before it creates it. So let's just call this DC for Domain Controller. Here's a username uh, for the login. You're gonna wanna keep track of the password so you don't lose that. Resource group, we're gonna pick an existing one. Location, North Europe, that looks good to me. Click OK. Now we're gonna be prompted for the size of the virtual machine. Now you wanna pay attention to this because this is what uh, will cost you money, You know, obviously by the month. And so it, it gives some default options, but I like to um, save a little money. So I click the view all. And uh, once that finishes displaying additional options, I go down here, because I like a bargain, down to the green A series. And I'm gonna pick this A1 basic, it has one core. You could do a fractional core, it just takes a little bit longer to uh, set things up in that. So I'm gonna pick A1 basic, click select. And then it's going to move us on to one of the final panes. And just wanted to point out a few things here. We're going to pick standard storage, but the virtual network, this is key right here. You want to make sure this is created on uh, this, uh, the virtual network that we just created. And then the subsequent VMs that we build will be on that uh, same virtual network so they can talk to each other easily. And we'll leave uh, the monitoring uh, as enabled. An availability set, this is important. Um, this is what you set up between servers so that they are more highly available 
so that maintenance doesn't get done on more than one server at, at a time. So we're going to pick an availability set that I've already created. And then Azure is going to, as soon as I click the OK button, come up with a summary. And uh, so you can review the settings that you've picked for this deployment and then just click OK. So we're going to let that uh, build and we will be right back. OK, we're back and our domain controller has been created. And this is what your screen will look like when it's finished. So we'll go back here and how do we connect to it? So I'm, I'm back on the Azure portal dashboard here. And we'll click on it to get back to that view. And you'll see the connect icon uh, be enabled here in a second. And what we'll do is we'll connect, we'll press that. And that's going to download an RDP file for us, as you see at the bottom of the screen. You can open that. Uh, but each time you do that, it's going to prompt you for ID and password to, to connect. So instead, I highly recommend uh, downloading the free remote desktop connection manager. You can put those credentials in here. As you, these are the same credentials as in that RDP file that it just downloaded. But what's slick about this is you can go to the properties of this um, of this branch and you can put in your login credentials here. And that way that same set of credentials is used for any server that you have underneath that tree. So we'll double click on that and that'll uh, bring up the server that we just created realize this uh, is not part of a domain yet we're just um, logging in with uh, credentials that we created so this is going to bring up server manager by default and i think it's great that this server manager comes up every time you start the server for the first few times when you're configuring things but after a while if that gets annoying just click the manage uh, link here and then you can say server manager properties and you can click this do not show on startup so um, so here we are. We're going to uh, go ahead and add roles and features. Going to bring us up to this uh, roles and features wizard. You can just pick the defaults for the few uh, first few screens. It's uh, asking to identify which server that we're going to add features to, and by default, it's the one that we're on. And now we're at the screen where we're going to pick uh, the role and/or features that we want. So on this one, we're going to uh, pick Active Directory Domain Services, and then it'll pop up a, a, a window telling us all the features that are going to be added. Go ahead and click Add. And then at this point, we're almost good to go. We're just going to click Next. We don't need to add anything else at this point. And then we and, and go ahead and click this Restart if necessary. That way, it'll do it automatically. And then lastly, hit the Install button. So now this is going to go on its merry way, uh, adding domain services, and we'll be right back to talk about next steps. Okay, the wizard is done, and so we can click the close button. What I want you to notice is up in the top right hand corner you'll see a notification click that and as the final step of uh, this um, role edition it's going to prompt you to promote this server to a domain controller go ahead and click that and uh, that will go through the process of that here we are at a domain controller we're going to say add a new forest and we're going to call this repco.com click next um, we can pick defaults here, add a password here. Click next. And then it gives you this warning, but there's nothing to worry about there. Click the next button. Uh, NetBIOS name, I'm going to give it uh, Repco as well. Give it a minute to settle there we go click next and we will be almost finished click the next button review your selections 
and then let it do its thing. Okay, it's verified that all the prerequisites are met, so we can now click the Install button. Here you can see that the wizard is finished successfully, and then it prompts us for a reboot. Okay, our domain controller is all set up, and we have three things left to do in this video. Uh, we're going to create two uh, virtual servers that are going to act as our failover cluster instance. So the way we do that, click New Resource. You can click the Marketplace See All. And then up in the search bar, just type SIOS. And that's going to be a Windows Server 2012 image with the SIOS Data Keeper software that we're going to use to keep our disks in sync. This is Sandless failover cluster instance. So create two of those. That's going to be your FCI. And then you just need one virtual machine without the SIO software. Just pick a Windows Server 2012 R2, and that'll be our disaster recovery solution. So thanks for watching the video today, and I will talk to you soon.